King Henry V is a well-known historical figure, famed for his military exploits, such as the victory over the French during the Battle of Agincourt. However, he suffered an injury at a young age, which could easily have ended his life. It was in 1403, during the Battle of Shrewsbury, a conflict largely centered around Henry IV being unable to pay debt to supporters who helped him take power, that the prince was nearly killed. Prince Henry, who was 16 at the time, was leading his men in the heat of battle when he was struck on the left side of his nose, under the eye, with the arrow burrowing six inches into his skull. severely wounded, Prince Henry refused to leave the battlefield, chose to fight on regardless of his wound, lest his retreat strike fear in his soldiers' hearts. It was the first occasion where massed troops armed with the longbow were pitted against one another on English soil. Though they would go on to win a decisive victory over the rebels, Prince Henry was in serious trouble and time was of the essence. He was swiftly sent to Kenilworth Castle for treatment. The prince was lucky to even have survived at all, as the arrow had just so managed to miss the vital areas inside the skull, narrowly missing the brain stem and surrounding arteries, coming to rest six inches deep at the base of the skull. It is thought that the arrow lost much of its momentum, likely ricocheting off a friendly plate helmet and into Prince Henry's face, as an arrow from a longbowman could easily pass through the skull with ease. They managed to pull the wooden shaft of the arrow from the wound. However, the bodkin arrowhead was firmly wedged in his skull. At first, the royal surgeons had little idea of what to do resorting to potions and charms, with the wound certain to become infected if action was not taken. Richard the Lionheart, after all, had died from a similar wound due to the infection. John Bradmore was an English surgeon, metal worker and author of Philomena, one of the earliest treatises on surgery. Before the Battle of Shrewsbury, Bradmore had been imprisoned on suspicion of using his metalworking skills for illegal purposes, hmm. counterfeiting coins. With the prince's survival becoming more and more unlikely, he was swiftly sent to his bedside to treat him. He could not use the conventional method of pushing the arrowhead through and out the other side, hmm. so he began designing a tool that could grip the bodkin and save his life, which would need to be narrow and smooth to avoid okay. the surrounding areas inside the skull, and would be called the Bradmore Screw. As he was a metal worker, like many surgeons had as a trade, he either made the tool himself or enlisted one of the court smiths, providing them with detailed instructions to find the arrowhead inside the skull and keep the wound open. He made small probes, which he called tents, of varying sizes. Simple sticks wrapped in clean linen cloth and dipped in rose honey, which was known to be antibacterial at the time. The Bradmore screw was very simple. A screw is turned at the back, opening the outer end of the tool and firmly gripping the arrowhead. It was then time to extract the bodkin. Bradmore detailed the exact surgery on the prince and the untested tool in the Philomena. Working blind and using feel, he maneuvered the tool into the arrowhead and then began twisting the screw. The prince was awake and in discomfort during the surgery. Once Bradmore felt the arrowhead grip the tool, he carefully wedged back and forth in the bone until it became loose and he gently pulled the bottom out. <laughs> the wound was then filled with wine to cleanse it, then applying a poultice of white bread, flour, barley, honey and turpentine, tending to the prince until he healed fully. There's no doubt that Bradmore saved the future king's life. 
a foreign object inside a wound would lead to sepsis, blood poisoning by bacteria, or tetanus, likely leading to death. None of the king's great military victories would have come to pass if not for some luck and the skill of his surgeon, John Bradmore. <laughs> A scar would remain on the left side of his face. The images painted of him are always from the other side to mask the scar. For saving the future king's life, he was rewarded with a large pension for the rest of his life, though he died nine years later. Thanks for watching.